Introduction to Pre-Calculus. Almost exactly two years ago, I was interviewed by our principal, Mr. Brooks, for the position of pre-calculus teacher at Wilmer Hutchins High School. At the end of our interview, Mr. Brooks offered me this job that I'm now going into for my third straight year. I told him that my goal was to become the best or top pre-calculus teacher in our school district. Now, two years later, I think it's fair to ask the question, how have I done in reaching my goal? Because of not having all the reports of the teachers in the district, I don't think this question can be answered with exactness, but I have enough information to know that I am amongst the top teachers in pre-AP pre-calculus. But as far as pre-calculus goes, I have to say that my results were pretty average in the district, or maybe a little better than average. Nevertheless, my improvements have been enough to know that I'm making progress and have every confidence that this will be the year when my regular pre-calculus class results will also rise amongst the top in the district. In this presentation, I want to describe what we'll be learning during our first semester of pre-calculus. A lot of you, maybe most of you, came from Mrs. Solace's Algebra 2 class last year. During the first semester, we'll be building a lot from Algebra 2. This is the textbook that we'll be using for the year. It may not seem like we'll be opening the book much, but most of the exercises we do to develop our skill come from this book. Now we'll briefly go over what we'll cover this year, emphasizing the first semester. In Chapter 1, we'll build from Algebra 2. This chapter, subtitled Functions and Their Properties, may be the most important in that it will contain the foundations from which we will build the rest of the year. We'll review the concepts and applications of domain and range, continuity, increasing and decreasing functions, boundedness, local and absolute extrema, symmetry, asymptotes, end behavior, limits, the basic precactus parent functions, of which there are 12, operations on functions, compositions of functions, inverses of functions, and graphical transformations. If you understand the vocabulary and applications in this chapter, you are well on your way to being successful in the class. For most of the rest of the course, we will be going more deeply into most of the 12 basic precalculus parent functions. We'll revisit linear and quadratic functions. We'll learn about power functions, higher degree polynomial functions such as cubic functions, and real zeros of polynomial functions. We'll learn about complex roots, the fundamental theorem of algebra, and the multiplicity of roots. And we'll learn about rational functions and solving equations and inequalities. Chapter 3 covers three more of our basic parent functions, exponential, logistic, and logarithmic functions. We probably won't talk too much about logistic functions in the scope of this course. And breaking it down, we'll graph and evaluate exponential functions, model with exponential functions, graph logarithmic functions, model using logarithmic functions, solve equations, and the mathematics of finance. And after that, we'll go into trigonometry, including functions and equations. We may briefly start on trigonometry during the first semester, but we'll really concentrate on trigonometry at the beginning of the second semester. And during the second semester, we'll go into vectors, parametric equations, conic sections, and sequences and series. One of the questions I'm asked most often is how we we'll use this. Algebra and the branches of algebra were invented and developed to answer real-world needs. And just about everything that was not invented to answer real-world needs seems to later have had real-world applications. And finally, if you're going on in math, engineering, social sciences, physical sciences, and many more things, much of what is in this course prepares you for the next level. So sometimes when we're dividing polynomials, finding inverses and compositions of functions, or maybe talking about multiplicity of roots, it might be difficult to see an immediate application. But a real-world application is never that far away, and whatever it is, it's a piece of knowledge or skill that has a reason for being here. This has been Introduction to Precalculus. Thanks for viewing.